This lesson deals with lab number eight, the design of a room equalizer. If you're listening to music in a confined space, the furniture, the drapes, the walls, and other objects in a room can cause amplitude and phase distortion in the audio band. A room equalizer attempts to correct this by dividing the audio band up into smaller bands of frequencies where the signals can be amplified, attenuated, or just left alone. We refer to this as boosting, cutting, or just flat response. In this lab, we're going to ask you to design a system. One way to do that is to draw what's called a block diagram. This is a pictorial model of a system where we use boxes to describe the behavior of the circuit, and then we design the pieces to go in the boxes. Now, you'll need to bring to lab an MP3 or a digital audio player as a source of sound, and we have a right and left channel. Now, if we design circuitry to go with this, we're going to have to design one for the right and one for the left. Now, to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to have you add the right and left channel together and create what's called a monaural system. This will cut the work in half. Now, if you want to build the full stereo system, you can, but you'll need to double the number of parts that are in the parts list. So we take one source of sound, and now I want to be able to take certain bands of frequencies and make them louder or softer. Do the correction for the objects that are in my room. Use three bandpass filters. It's a low value of F0 in the audio band, something in the middle, and something at the high end. So what I've got coming out of here now is my music broken down into three bands of frequencies, which will contain most of the sound that I have. Now, I may want to make this particular output louder or softer. I got my bandpass characteristic, and then I'm going to put it through a circuit where I'm going to be able to give it some gain. I'm going to do that with a potentiometer. So an op amp will give me some gain, and the pot will allow me to adjust the signal that's coming out of here. Be able to boost it, or perhaps maybe cut it, make it smaller. We're going to set the center point of it such that the gain is equal to 1, which is going to pass the signal. Do that for three different frequencies. I'm going to add those together with a summing circuit with three pots, and those pots will allow us to adjust the volume for that band of frequencies. Now the summing circuit is going to put our music back together again with some bands louder, some bands softer, some bands maybe not manipulated at all. And lastly, we'll put it through the power amplifier we designed in our microphone lab and then drive a speaker with it. So the first part of our design needs a summing amplifier. And we actually did this in ECE 201 in supplemental problem 410. Here we have two inputs, one output, and we're going to add these two results together with a scale factor and a sign change. So let's take the results and they're shown below. I'll let this be my left channel and my right channel. The output here, we could just derive the results again. If you just do superposition, set this equal to zero, the gain is minus RF over R1 times V1, and set this one equal to zero, and the gain is equal to minus RF over R2 times V2, and of course V1 is V left and V2 is V right, and this is my monaural output. If I make the resistors all equal to each other, then I just get simply the summation of the two inputs with a sign change. So what does the sign change mean? what's well, going to flip the signal over. So effectively, it's like getting a time delay. But since we don't know when the music starts, having a time delay won't be able to be detected. So we'll be able to pass the signal through with this a time delay. Our next block is a bandpass filter. And in lab seven, we use this structure to create a second order bandpass filter with a transfer function that's shown here. Here we've got our monaural summed inputs as the input to this circuit. The output then would be one of, of three bandpass filters. So here's the transfer function that we derived. We showed that it was a second order bandpass filter. In lab seven, we also developed a design procedure for this bandpass filter, where we picked two capacitors equal to each other. So given the values of H naught, Q naught, and omega naught, and with this constraint, we found that Q naught had to be greater than the square root of H naught over two. Now, if that's not true, we'll have to pick some other constraint here. But I wanna pick my design spec so that this will work. Then we show we could pick the resistor R5, R1, and R2 in terms of these three specs and this initial pick. So if these become impractical, then we go back and modify our first pick. And so we use this design procedure to design our three center frequencies for our three bandpass filters. Our next task is to specify the three center frequencies of our bandpass filters to broadly cover the audio band from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Now what do commercial equalizers do? Well, they actually do an octave spacing starting at 16 hertz, and it takes about 10 bandpass filters to cover the audio band. This is great coverage, but that's a lot of circuits to build. So let's do something a little bit simpler, but use a similar idea. Let's pick F02 to be roughly the logarithmic center of the audio band. And then let's go back two octaves for F01, and let's go forward two octaves for F03. That'll give us a pretty good coverage if we have a wide bandpass filter. Now the value of F02, I vary each semester so the design is different every semester. And that keeps everybody honest so we can pass down results from one semester to another. But now we've got the values of F01, F02, and F03 for our three bandpass filters. What about H0? Okay, let's look at a commercial equalizer. They typically have gains for boosting of 12 dB and cutting for minus 12 dB. 
And what does that correspond to? Well, 12 dB, if you divide that by 20 and make it the power of 10 is equal to four, and do the same thing for minus 12 dB, you get one quarter. Bandpass filter has its biggest gain at F naught, and that's the value of H naught. So let's set that equal four. The one quarter we'll get from the potentiometers in our summing circuit, and we'll take a look at that in a little bit. Our next task is to pick the value of Q naught. For a design procedure, Q naught needs to be greater than H naught over two, and we now know that our design H naught is four, so Q0 needs to be greater than 1.414. Now, as I said in ECE202, Q0 is a measure of sharpness of a bandpass filter. So we don't want to pick this too large, otherwise we'll have really just a small band of frequencies instead of a wide band of frequencies between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz. Now here too, again, I vary the value of Q0 each semester so we get a different result from semester to semester. So you can find the value of the f naughts and the Q0 in the lab itself. Our next block is a variable summer. So let's take our summing circuit and we'll add a third one here from what we did on page two. And now let's add a pot coming out of each of our bandpass filters. And when I put this pot all the way to the top, let's make the signal get louder. And when I put it all the way to the bottom, I'm gonna get zero, so I'll get nothing out. And let's make the middle maybe a gain of one. We'll solve for those numbers in a few more pages. Do the same thing for V out two. This is our second bandpass filter in the, in the logarithmic center of the audio band. And this is going to be at two octaves higher. And of course, this one is two octaves lower from the center frequency F02. Let's summarize where we are in our design. So our audio signal, which we call our mono input, is fed into three bandpass filters, each of which passes a band of frequencies around some F0 sub i. The variable summer then takes the output of these three filters and reassembles the audio band from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. With a pot, we can take each of these smaller band of frequencies and make them louder, softer, or just leave them alone. And that's where our design is so far. Let's take a look at our next tasks. This is in words what I just said on the previous page. Now next, we need to pick the values for the resistors. If we want the center position of the pot to give a gain of one, then we could use this to pick the value of the feedback resistor if we select the values for the pot and the input resistors. If you look at section three of the lab, you'll see that there are values given for the pot and the resistors R1, R2, and R3. And again, I vary these each semester to get the results to be different from year to year. Our next task is to pick the feedback resistor in the variable summer. And what we wanna do with the variable summer is when a pot is set in the center position to get a gain of one. Let's set the other two pots equal to zero and just have the output due to the first filter. Now, if we're at the center frequency, the output would be H naught times the input, which is our V monaural. Now in the center position, we have half value for each pot. And then looking into the summer, we have a input resistance of R1 for the first connection. The feedback resistor over R1 is equal to our gain, but it's negative, so we'll put the minus sign this way. So this is the output of the equalizer due to one of the inputs. All right, so that's gonna equal the minus RF over R1 times V sub X. This is the input voltage to that variable summer. But what's the value here? Well, it's just a voltage divider. So it's gonna be these two in parallel over these two in parallel, voltage divided with R pot over two times the input, which is H naught times V monaural. Now we can solve that to find the output due to one of the bandpass filters due to the monaural input. And that's just gonna be equal to H naught, which is here, times this expression, times minus RF over R1. And we're gonna set that equal to one. What I'd like you to do now is to solve this equation for the value of R sub F, since we know the value of R1, H naught, and R pot. Now we can do the same thing again for the other two pots, but if we're gonna pick the resistors R1, R2, and R3 to be equal to each other, we'll get the same value for R sub F. We wanna hook up our music to a speaker, so we'll need a power amplifier with a volume control again. We did this in lab five, so I grabbed that same circuit. We used an op amp and two transistors. In lab five, this was a 50K pot, but we're gonna be using the board we used for the noise canceling headphones, and that had a 100K pot. We can recompute the low frequency corner. It was about 15 hertz before. It's around 7.23 hertz with a 100k pot. As we showed in lab five, the gain from the output back to the input was one plus the resistor ratio. And then we're able to vary that gain from our signal from zero basically up to a gain of 11 when this capacitor looks like a short circuit. And again, that's gonna occur for frequencies above about seven hertz. Before you come to lab next time, I'd like you to meet with your lab partner and pick the resistors and capacitors that were not specified in these lab lecture notes or in section three of lab eight. The components we have available in our parts cabinet I've shown as the last page of lab eight. Use the nearest standard value and don't use series or parallel combinations to get the exact value. The room equalizer is not a super precise circuit, so we're just gonna get close. 
In lab 7, I used a .047 microfarad capacitor to design the bandpass filters. I'd like you to use a different value of capacitor for the bandpass filters in this lab. Force you to think about the actual component selection. When you meet with your lab partner to pick the resistors for the op-amp circuits, let's use the ideas we had in lab number 6, which was to pick resistors between 1K and 1 megohm. Again, the reason for this is when the resistors are smaller than 1K, they tend to draw more current than the op-amp can supply. When they're greater than 1 million ohms, the noise generated by the resistor can become noticeable in the output of the circuit. These are not super hard fast rules, but you can go a little bit above and a little bit below these limits, but to stay within those, you'll have few problems with a non-ideal op-amp. As far as capacitors go, I recommend picking capacitors between 300 picofarads and 0.1 microfarad. Going below this, we start to run into problems with the wires themselves and the protoboard. Between two pins in a protoboard, you could have between 5 and 10 picofarads of capacitance. So if we stay at least a large factor away from that, then the effect of the pins will be minimal. On the upper end, I like to stay below 0.1 microfarad capacitors because these tend to be capacitors that have the polyester film dielectric. These have very high element cues and basically looks like an ideal capacitor. When you go above this, you begin to get into the electrolytic capacitors, and these have fairly low values of element Q and cause, again, errors in the bandpass filter. Now, after you meet with your lab partner and pick the component values, I'd like you to email your instructor the part list at least 24 hours before the start of this lab. This will allow your TA to pull the parts for you and place them in a bag. This will save some time in getting the parts to you quickly when you come to lab. Before you come to lab, I'd also like you to sketch out your complete design with the components label. You can find a blank protoboard in Lab 8 in Figure 1. I'd like you to lay this out with your lab partner, and then make a copy of this and bring that to lab, and you can stick them into your lab report. The reason you want two of them is that you have one lab report for each student in lab. The purpose of this lab was to design a room equalizer to compensate for furniture drapes, walls, and rugs that can cause amplitude and phase distortion. Some of the concepts that we covered were designing a stereo to binaural converter, determining design constraints and component selection for bandpass filters for the equalizer, and lastly designing a variable summer. This is a two-week lab. There'll be a quiz at the first time you come to lab on the background material, which includes these notes and the video that goes with it, as well as the lab procedure. When you come to lab the second time, there will not be another quiz. And this is lab number eight, room equalizer design.